Wherefore the prophets sent by the Lord declared them to be wretched, saying, Woe is he who giveth his neighbors to drink muddy destruction. For such practices and devices are subversive of the way which leads to virtue. And the Lord himself, even if the demons spoke the truth, for they said truly, Thou art the Son of God, still bridled their mouths and suffered them not to speak, lest happily they should sow their evil along with the truth, and that he might accustom us never to give heed to them even though they appear to speak what is true. For it is unseemly that we, having the holy scriptures and freedom from the Saviour, should be taught by the devil who hath not kept his own order, but hath gone from one mind to another. Wherefore, even when he uses the language of scripture, he forbids him, saying, But to the sinner said God, Wherefore dost thou declare my ordinances, and takest my covenant in thy mouth? For the demons do all things, they prate, they confuse, they disassemble, they confound, to deceive the simple. They din, laugh madly, and whistle, but if no heed is paid to them forthwith, they weep and lament as though vanquished. The Lord, therefore, as God, stayed the mouth of the demons, and it is fitting that we, taught by the saints, should do like them and imitate their courage. For they, when they saw these things, used to say, When the sinner rose against me, I was dumb and humble, and kept silence from good words. And again, but I was as a deaf man and heard not, and as a dumb man who opened not his mouth, and I became as a man who heareth not. So let us neither hear them as being strangers to us, nor give heed to them, even though they arouse us to prayer and speak concerning fasting. But let us rather apply ourselves to resolve our discipline, and let us not be deceived by them who do all things in deceit, even though they threaten death, for they are weak, and could do naught but threaten. Already in passing I have spoken on these things, and now I must not shrink from speaking on them at greater length, for to put you in remembrance will be a source of safety. Since the Lord visited earth, the enemy is fallen and his powers weakened. Wherefore, Although he could do nothing, still like a tyrant, he did not bear his fall quietly, but threatened, though his threats were words only. And let each one of you consider this, and he will be able to despise the demons. Now if they were hampered with such bodies as we are, it would be possible for them to say, Men, when they are hidden we cannot find, but whenever we do find them, we do them hurt. And we also by lying and concealment could escape them, shutting the doors against them. But if they are not of such nature as this, but are able to enter in, though the doors be shut, and haunt all the air, both they and their leader the devil, and are wishful for evil and ready to injure. And as the Savior said, From the beginning the devil is a manslayer and a father of vice. While we, though this is so, are alive, and spend our lives all the more in opposing him, it is plain they are powerless. For place is no hindrance to their plots, nor do they look on us as friends that they should spare us, nor are they lovers of good that they should make amend, but on the contrary they are evil. And nothing is so much sought after by them as wounding them that love virtue and fear God. But since they have no power to effect anything, they do not but threaten. But if they could, they would not hesitate, but forthwith work evil, for all their desire is set on this and especially against us. Behold, now we are gathered together and speak against them, and they know when we advance they grow weak. If therefore they had power, they would permit none of us Christians to live, for godliness is an abomination to a sinner. But since they can do nothing, they inflict the greater wounds on themselves, for they can fulfill none of their threats. Next this ought to be considered, that we may be in no fear of them, that if they had the power, they would not come in crowds, nor fashion displays, nor with change of form would they frame deceits. But it would suffice that one should come and accomplish that which he was both able and willing to do, especially as everyone who has the power neither slays with display, nor strikes fear with tumult, but forthwith makes full use of his authority as he wishes." But the demons, as they have no power, are like actors on the stage, changing their shape and frightening children with tumultuous apparitions in various forms, from which they ought rather to be despised as showing their weakness. 
At least the true angel the Lord sent against the Assyrian had no need for tumults, nor displays from without, nor noises, nor rattlings. But in quiet he used his power and forthwith destroyed a hundred and eighty-five thousand. But demons like these, who have no power, try to terrify at least by their displays. But if any one having in mind the history of Job should say, Why then hath the devil gone forth and accomplished all things against him, and stripped him of all his possessions, and slew his children, and smote him with evil ulcers? Let such a one on the other hand recognize that the devil was not the strong man, but God who delivered Job to him to be tried. Certainly he had no power to do anything, but he asked, and having received it, he hath wrought what he did. So also from this the enemy is more to be condemned, for although willing he could not prevail against one just man. For if he could have, he would not have asked permission. But having asked not once, but also a second time, he shows his weakness and want of power. And it is no wonder if he could do nothing against Job, when destruction would have not come even on his cattle had not God allowed it. And he has not the power over swine, for, as it is written in the gospel, they besought the Lord, saying, Let us enter the swine. But if they had power not even against swine, much less have they any over men formed in the image of God. So then we ought to fear God only, and despise the demons, and be in no fear of them. But the more they do these things, the more let us intensify our discipline against them. For a good life and faith in God is a great weapon. At any rate, they fear the fasting, the sleeplessness, the prayers, the meekness, the quietness, the contempt of money and vainglory, the humility, the love of the poor, the alms, the freedom from anger of the aesthetics, and chief of all, their piety towards Christ. Wherefore, they do all things that they may not have any that trample on them, knowing the grace given to the faithful against them by the Savior when he says, Behold, I have given to you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and upon all the power of the enemy. Wherefore, if they pretend to foretell the future, let no one give heed. For often they announce beforehand that the brethren are coming days after, and they do come. The demons, however, do this not from any care for the hearers, but to gain their trust, and that then at length, Having got them in their power, they may destroy them. Whence we must give no heed to them, but ought rather to confute them when speaking, since we do not need them. For what wonder is it, if, with more subtle bodies than men have, when they have seen them start on their journey, they surpass them in speed and announce their coming? Just as a horseman getting a start of a man on foot announces the arrival of the latter beforehand, so in this there is no need for us to wonder at them. For they know none of those things which are not yet in existence. But God only is he who knoweth all things before their birth. But these, like thieves, running off first when what they see, proclaim it. To how many already have they announced our business, that we are assembled together and discuss measures against them, before any one of us could go and tell these things. This in good truth a fleet-footed boy could do, getting far ahead of one less slift. But what I mean is this, if any one begins to walk from the Theobad, or from any other district, before he begins to walk, they do not know whether he will walk. But when they see him walking, they run on, and before he comes up, report his approach. And so it falls out that a few days the travelers arrive, but often the walkers turn back, and the demons prove false. So too, with respect to the water of the river, they sometimes make foolish statements. For having seen that there has been much rain in the regions of Ethiopia, and knowing that they are the cause of flood of the river before the water has come to Egypt, they run on and announce it. And this men could have told, if they had a great power of running as the demons, and as David's spy, going up to a lofty place, saw the man approaching better than one who had stayed down below, and the forerunner himself announced, before the others came up, not those things which had not taken place, but those things which were already on the way and were being accomplished. So these also prefer to labor and declare what is happening to others simply for the sake of deceiving them. If, however, Providence meantime plans anything different for the waters or wayfarers, for Providence can do this, the demons are deceived, and those who gave heed to them cheated. 
Thus in days gone by arose the oracles of the Greeks, and thus they were led astray by the demons. But thus also thenceforth their deception was brought to an end by the coming of the Lord, who brought to naught the demons and their devices. For they know nothing of themselves, but like thieves, what they get to know from others they pass on, and guess at rather than foretell things. Therefore, if sometimes they speak the truth, let no one marvel at them for this. For experienced physicians also, since they conceive the same malady in different people, often foretell what it is, making it out by their acquaintance with it. Pilots, too, farmers from their familiarity with the weather, tell at a glance the state of the atmosphere, and forecast whether it will be stormy or fine. And no one would say that they do this by inspiration, but from experience and practice. So if the demons sometimes do the same by guesswork, let no one wonder at it or heed them. For what use to the hearers is it to know from them what is going to happen before the time? Or what concern have we to know such things, even if the knowledge be true? For it is not productive of virtue, nor is it any token of goodness. For none of us is judged for what he knows not, and no one is called blessed because he hath learning and knowledge. But each one will be called to judgment in these points, whether we have kept the faith and truly observed the commandments.